Hey everybody, welcome back to Dom Pierre. Now I'm gonna be continuing midway through a game and a lot of stuff has already happened. If you wanna see how we got where we are and learn the basics of the game, you can hit that I in the top right corner of the screen or follow the links down in the show notes to go to the main run through and uh, start from the beginning. But if you are ready to continue from where we left off, then welcome back to France. All right, which probably makes no sense I just said it that way, but Saturday Night Live fans, and Audrey Plaza fans maybe know what I'm talking about. Although you might be seeing this years from now. I was referring to a Saturday Night Live skit that really made me laugh a couple of weeks ago. France! Anyway, sorry. That's neither here nor there. It is my turn. And I'm trying to think about what I'm going to do. I'm certainly in a situation where I could start pressing. The uh, same as you saw Jen do. Um, but I just noticed something. There is a goal to have three uh, pedo um, oh, menway. Oh, how do I pronounce it? I, ah, I think it's Meunier. I think it's Meunier. Or, you know, the French or something. Anyway, having two or three Pinot Meunier could give me seven or 12 points. I've got two. If I could get one more Pinot Meunier on my presses, I could finish this and get 12 points. But I can't because there's a big old barrel of wine in my way. But you know what, folks? Remember, I was just talking about how there are four different free actions you can do on your turn, and one of them is just sell something uh, for a coin. I'm going to sell this flask of wine. I'm just going to get rid of this right now. Bye bye and get another coin. Yee! And now that was a free action. And now, for my main action, I could go back to the vineyards yet again um, and start filling up this and hopefully fill that one up too. So let's do it. Wee! Okay, so I am now doing a level three. I'm going to plant three grapes. And this is so dangerous. Because what if I end up, you know, getting two of the same color again? Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna risk it, though. I'm going big. I'm going big. All right, so I'm going to go for three, right? Uh, and because these are all still down here, it still only cost me one coin. Uh, all right, which I just made. And so here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go again. Drawing three. Oh, and I just drew four. Hold on a second. Let me feel around a bit better. A one, two, three. Yes, there we go. All right, one of each color. Wow, okay. That's perfect. That means I can fill this with one of each color right away. Okay, let's start planting. You know, I love some vineyard action over here uh, in Dom Pierre's backyard. So what am I going to do? Well, and don't forget, one of the times I do it, I get to add the base value of the thing I'm planting to what I'm harvesting. Interesting. Interesting. Do -do 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 -do. Interesting. Yeah, let's 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 go for it. Let's go for it. Let's do my first one. I will put it. No. Yeah, I will, I will put it right here. Yeah. Okay, I'll put it right there. Okay, and now that means I can get a level one uh, purple, a level one green, or a level one black, or a level two green if if I want. Um, and I don't. So I'm gonna get. Uh, let's see. What do I want? Uh, let's go on ahead and just get that level one purple, that level one Pinot Noir. So now this press is completely full. So that's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to, it's not very, not full of very big stuff, but hey, alrighty. Now let's go on ahead and, hmm, see, I'm wanting to get to that coin. I want that sweet coin because money is so tight in this game. So I think I'm going to be a little bit less... Uh, then uh, perfect with my with what I'm harvesting. Let's go on ahead and put this black there. No, 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 no. Let's put this uh, purple, and now I can pick to activate a level three green or a level. Or, yeah, I'm sorry. No, a level two green or a level one black. And of course, level two is better than level one. So let's go on ahead and get a level two Chardonnay. Right. Boom. And now... Oh, shoot! No, 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 no. Okay, I got to do this the other way. All right? Let's put the black here. And instead of the level 2 Chardonnay, uh, instead of doing the level 2 Chardonnay, let's do the level... Um, I will use my special power to trigger this plus this. So that is a level 2 Pinot Meunier. Then I will put the blue one out 
Boom. I will get a coin. And <gasps> shoot. But then, oh, no, no. I can either have a level one green or a level one black. I'll take the level one green, the Chardonnay. And I will put it there. So I didn't break any rules. And now every one of my presses has a Pinot Meunier. And that means I want to go and grab this before somebody else does. And I'm richer than when I started. Okay. Although I, I am out a uh, uh, barrel of wine. Okay. So that was it for me. And um, Mal, by the way, folks, you may have noticed, there's not much farther for me to go. The next time I decide that I am going to uh, harvest, you know, and put three grapes out and get more back, I will move up here. It'll cost whatever it costs. I'll get to do it three times like you just saw me. And then this gets moved over here. And this is the timer of the game. I will no longer be able to do vineyard actions for the rest of the game. I'll have to go elsewhere to get my grapes. Um, but at And in a two-player game, once one, two, three, four uh, actions have been locked out, uh, that is what triggers the end of the game. There's one more round, and then you tally up final score and all of that. So... Um, it was kind of, I mean, I really wanted that coin, but it means I did do a very suboptimal. But you know what? We're playing the fast game. If I were playing the longer game, I would get one more action. You get to do a lot more stuff. The game goes a lot longer. You have a bigger, deeper, but I mean, this is for, you know, forget about the two birds in the, uh, the two in the bush. I want the one bird in the hand because I don't have much time because literally the game gets cut down by a length by like 20%. Um, and you start out doing much bigger, bolder actions. Anyway, though, so I got that coin back. I am done, and I'm only ever going to get to harvest or vineyard one more time. So that is it for me. I think it is Jen's turn, and Jen is going to be the first to sell. Sell! Where she does not have a bonus. Now, by the way, remember, folks, remember, if Jen just does a few more actions, then she'll get this plus one. She could put it on any of these. She puts it here. Uh, she gets plus one action on sales, or more powerful sales, more powerful village visits, more powerful um, vineyard actions, or she could replace the existing ones and make um, you know her logistics more powerful, etc., etc. But that's going to be a little ways off. As right now, she's been to the village, she's pressed, she is now going to do some sales. Uh, she gets to sell two, and it doesn't cost her nothing. So, she is going to sell two of these five things. Oh wait, 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 oh wait. No, she's not. Before she sells, she's going to do some logistics, which she is better at. She gets a bonus for the logistics. Now, she's doing a level two logistics, it's free, and what does logistics mean? This game, unlike most wine or champagne-themed games, really focuses a lot on your workforce. We started with one worker over here, and then a whole bunch more just sitting by in the village ready to go. Jen, by doing this level 2 action, she now gets to deploy workers to various places. So this action means take two of her workers, either from existing places or from the reserve. So she's going to grab two from the reserve. In addition to however many you grab from wherever you want, any of them that are just chilling over here at the mansion, you grab them also. So Jen now gets to deploy three workers. Now she wants to put at least one more down here so that she can, after she clears this press out, she can get another barrel of wine over here so she can complete the big version of that. So she's going to need some people to press. Now there are other places we could send them. We could send these people out into the vineyard. And what that means is on a future turn, whenever Jen would harvest green grapes for Chardonnay from anywhere, she could say, oh, by the way, I'm going to use this um, this uh, field worker and get one more. So you can, you can increase the yield you get when you harvest. And so she could put several of them out there so that when she... She hasn't uh, done vineyard actions at all. So she could be making higher quality grapes by putting them out there into the field. She can um, put them over here in the presses ready to make more barrels of wine instead of champagne. But... Right now, I think the place Jen is most interested in sending them is out into the roads and deploying these as salespeople. Because eventually, Jen is planning on selling probably to Monaco. Maybe not. I haven't really thought about that too terribly much. Does she want to sell to Monaco or St. Petersburg or Amsterdam or Philadelphia? Well, she's got to decide now. Because by default, when you sell, 
you get certain returns. Monaco gives a plus three value to anything she sells from her third press, which is where she wants to sell from. Remember, she's got, she wants to clear these out. She wants to sell these. And she doesn't want to give them away for a coin. She wants to turn these into points to win the game. And I think, yeah, I think, I think, considering these are what she wants to sell from her third, not her first or her second press, from her third press, looking back up at the layout, Monaco values stuff from the third press, giving it plus three. Now, so does St. Petersburg. Philadelphia gives a plus two. Amsterdam gives a plus two. But there's another thing. Randomly, as part of setup, we um, put out these tiles. These say how many points you get. And right now, selling to Monaco, selling a uh, you know a low quality is worth um, three points. Selling mid quality, which is what Jen is planning on doing, is worth six. Selling high quality is worth nine. Now if she's planning on being able to sell mid quality. She gets six points in Monaco. In St. Pete, she only gets five. In Philadelphia she only gets five in Amsterdam and she only gets two so yeah I think Jen is all about Monaco and before she sells if she could get some sugar oh she would make even higher quality but okay so Jen has decided this is what she's going for she hasn't committed but she is committing her salespeople because she's doing logistics she is sending two people out on the road to talk up how amazing her bubbly is and as part of setup in a two player game and it's only for a two player game we put out some dummy salespeople to kind of tighten up the board a little bit so Jen is going to send somebody out here and you always put them in into the next available space. So Jen is going to put one there. And now that means because Jen has a salesperson in this segment of the road, then um, everything that this person sells has plus one more quality. So, because Jen is trying to push to get the medium quality rather than the low quality. If she could push up to the high quality, which she could almost do, because remember, she has a base quality of seven on this. She has a base quality of um, four on this. And since they both come from there, they're going to get... So it's four plus three is already seven. And a 10 plus three is already 10. Now, but what, what, what does that mean? What does quality mean? Well, you're reminded up here, but players also have this little reminder right here that if you sell a, a one to five quality wine, you get, that's low quality. You get the low quality return. Six to 10 is the medium quality. Um, 11 or more is the high quality. So these salespeople can increase the sales potential. And here's the deal. Remember, um, I mentioned that both of us have this upgrade, which is the salesman upgrade. During logistics, one time, you can have one of your sales, you can deploy one of your salespeople skipping a blank space. If Jen did not have that power and she wanted to go to this road, she'd have to put the next one here, which didn't increase the overall power of her salespeople. She's still in the one segment. But since she gets to skip a space, she comes all the way over here. And now when this salesperson sells, it's plus two. And when this salesperson sells, it's plus one. Now, Jen didn't have to. She could have branched out. She could have gotten over here ready to sell to St. Petersburg later or, you know, whatever. Um, but she is going to focus like a laser on Monaco. And uh, because they've got the best return in terms of points uh, randomly, just based on how things came out. Plus, oh, they love that sugar. So anyway, so that was it for Jen. Jen did some logistics. She took her one from the mansion, plus two more because it was a level two. She put one more back at work, ready to work at the presses to make some more wine because she's eyeballing that goal. And now she's got two salespeople to upsell her bubbly to uh, Monaco. And now it's my turn. And now here's an opportunity I have to literally break Jen's heart if I want to. I am going to be the first player to actually go and declare a goal that I've got for myself. Because I've talked about these goals a bit now. I'm really eyeballing that one. Jen's really eyeballing that one. But you can't just do them. You have to spend the time to go and get those cards so you can score them later. And... Uh, things might get a little dicey here. So th remember, these actions don't cost anything, so I don't have to spend anything. I'm doing a level two. And what that means is I look at these five cards out here. I pick, I take two of them. One of them I keep as a public goal that everybody can see I'm trying to achieve. And the other one I trash out of the game and get the bonus. So now we already know this is the one I want to do because I've already freaking done it. I've got all the Pinot Munier, right? I mean, mean Munois, Munois, Munois. Ah, um, but I got to take another one and I could take this one and then 
all of Jem's hopes and dreams. Because I can see what she's doing. I can see, wow, that's a lot of wine you've got there. I wonder if this is what you want. So I could take this. Now, that would be a real dick move. And um, uh, Jem would be very unhappy with me. And also, it'd be bad for me too, because the bonus I get off it is a Pinot. Oh my gosh, it's a Pinot Meunier. A Mu Meunier, Meunier, Meunier. Right? No, I think it's Pinot Meunier. Meunier, Meunier. Why is this so hard? Why is French so hard? Anyway, um, man, you know what? I did not have to go out there. But remember, I wanted to go out there because I wanted to get that coin as well before Jen might have got it, because she could have grabbed it at any time. But I could have gotten this Pinot Meunier um, by coming here, snagging that, putting it in position, and then snagging that to complete it. But you know what? I'm not going to do it. But actually, hold on a second. Before I forgot, there's another thing I forgot. Folks, this is why you always watch the Klingon subtitles turned on, because Paulo is always pointing out when I forget little things. And there's a lot of little things in this game. Uh, anyway, though, remember, we both, as part of our starting draft, ended up with the power... Or no, I'm sorry, because we're... Not that one. We both have the power to enhance our, uh, what do you call it? The uh, goals tiles. And what this power means is, before I pick any, what, le what, what level action I'm doing? I'm doing a level two. This power says, draw two more cards. So I've actually got seven to choose from. Okay, and these new ones that came out. Okay, this is, oh, this is have um, either three or seven people out on the road. Jen's already got two out on the road. Uh, and you can see there's the symbol for the road. This one is have four or seven um, oh, completed sales to uh, places that wanted these particular accessories. Now, this doesn't change anything. This is what I was going for. Uh, and because I'm doing a level two action, I'm going to take two. So I'm going to take that one as my um, uh, bonus. I could take this one to break all of Jen's hopes and dreams. But nope, I'll take this one. Not as a bonus, because I'm only getting one goal card. I'm taking this to get another sweet, sweet coin. I'm rich! Rich, I tells you. And this is just gone. Okay, and now there's five cards. Now, if I did not have this power, if we had been playing a higher player count game, chances are there would be players who don't have this ability. What this means is a, a power two, you still take two, um, and then you draw the replacements at the end of your turn. This power means you get to draw the replacements before your turn so you have more things to choose from. And I'm happy because, honestly, I wanted to have a coin more than... Although, man, I mean, just... I mean. If I would have taken this from her, even though I couldn't have used this, that was like me making 12 points by preventing her from getting that. But that would have been, like I said, a very mean move. Folks, in this game, don't learn this the hard way. If you see a goal card you want, grab that goal card as fast as you can because anybody else could make it disappear. Certainly, don't go through all the trouble, as I have done, to telegraph exactly what you're planning on scoring so that somebody else can see, oh, it'd be a real shame if that disappeared and then disappear it from you. Uh, just a little bit of a strategy tip there. Uh, something of Jen and I learned the hard way the first time we played it, and oh, I made her so very unhappy. And I made myself unhappy as a result as well. Um, you know, get this, uh, you know, do the goal action before you set about completing the goal action. Anyway, though, so that was it for me. It didn't cost me anything. I took two cards, one for a bonus that made me some more money. I'm back to where I started, and now I can complete this goal. And now remember how I talked about on every turn, you have four different free actions you can do. And it's really weird. This game so desperately needs a player aid. So desperately needs a player aid um, for all the complex actions you can do. And on the other side of the player aid should be a nice little summary of what the four actions are. Instead, the four free actions are spread all over the place. They are, um, as you saw me do on a previous turn, sell anything for a coin. You can do that once per turn. Another one is... You spend five coins to work your way up the prestige track, which can be a huge source of points. I haven't even talked about this yet. But as a free action, you can spend five coins to move up the prestige track. You can also, what's called, pop the cork. And that means, uh, that is this thing. Uh, where is it? Yeah, right here. This is one of your free actions. You can basically flip this card to say, oh, my free action was, I popped the cork. And that means you can immediately move any one of your tokens up one step. You won't do the action. It just means you've got access to a better action later. Or you've gotten to where you can unlock a thing. Or you've triggered the end of the game or whatever it might be. Now, there's a reason you don't want to pop the cork. If you have not popped the cork before the end of the game, um, this is mostly just a reminder of the uh, value when you sell wine, which you're about to see Jen do. Uh, it's also whoever was first player was the one who got this card. And it's a reminder that, hey, you can pop the cork. 
you also have a crown. At the end of the game, you are going to get points based on how many crowns you've got. And Jen is about to sell to Monaco, which is going to give her a crown. By default, every crown is worth one point. But the higher you go on the prestige track, every crown can be worth two or even three points. Plus, just working up the track can get you 5, 10, 15, 20, all the way up to 30 points. You want that prestige. One of the ways to get that prestige is to spend five coins, which is a fortune in this game. I'm almost to the point where I could pull it off. I'm, I've got a ton of coins because I've really been working on it. Uh, but the more I uh, use these coins, the less I can do these actions. Uh, except for making wine. Wine requires labor, not coins. If I never bother to go to town, though, and forget about all those bonuses, hey, yeah, maybe one more coin, and then I work my way up prestige, and that's a quick five points. Anyway, though, um, but if you pop the cork so you can push any of these up to you know, pursue your agenda, you've thrown away one crown, which could be one, two, or three points at the end of the game. And um, so those are the four actions. They are spend five coins to get a prestige, pop the cork, sell a thing for a coin, or I didn't mention the fourth one. The fourth one is complete a goal you've got. And this is my free action. I am going to say I have three Pinot Meuniers, uh, which means I get 12 points, please. Boom. Just like that. And this is done. I got it and I completed it. Again, very dangerous. If somebody else would have seen that, oh, I have those, and almost guaranteed somebody would on their turn would have gone and taken this just to get one of these accessories so they could end up selling a higher quality to Amsterdam because Amsterdam wants things packaged this way. I guarantee you somebody would have done that. Um, because they, I mean, which is why do not telegraph what you're trying to do. I was, I was very strategically unsound doing all the action and then going for the goal. Anyway, though. Um, it all worked out. So, yay! That was a big turn for me. Next turn, I need to start pressing some wine, I think. Uh, toot sweet. All right. Although, man, I would like to go to town if there was a Pinot Noir right here that I could slip into this last spot, but there's not, and I'm not going to do my last thing just to get one grape, so I'm definitely going to press next turn. But this turn, Jen is going to sell. Sell, sell! And then after, you know, Jen's, I mean, I've just focused on one thing like a laser. Once Jen does a couple more things, she's going to get this plus one and apply it to one power for the rest of the game. But you know what? No, no, Jen's not going to sell right now. She's going to wait a little bit because that was a pretty brutal reminder that I could have stolen that right out from under her. She says, you know what? Boy, maybe I should have done that a little bit sooner. I think she's going to go and get a goal too. So she, like me, it's free. She's doing a level two. Uh, and because she has the goal upgrade, she draws two. And now she's going to take two. She is taking this one because she would have been so sad if that had disappeared. And now, what other one is she going to take for a bonus? Um, and, you know, this is a... Oh, she could get that sweet, sweet sugar to sell to Monaco because they love the sugar. Or she could get another NPC on her press. Or, uh, you know, this other packaging thing. Or one of these plus tokens that she could apply to a press so it produces better. Although, no, she wouldn't grab this anyway, because this is an upgrade to a press. It can only be installed when a press is completely empty. But if she had an empty press, she could take this, she could put a little plus one on it, and then um, what that means is, on a future turn, when she runs that, everything that comes out of there has a plus one. Although it is a temporary upgrade, it's not a permanent upgrade. Anyway, though, so... Jen is going to grab one of these. Does she just want to get another winemaker? Or does she want to get that sugar? And by the way, yeah... Oh my gosh. Hey, hold on a second. Jen, uh, this goal is 7 or 12 points to have two of your road salespeople in different segments. Jen's got that right now. This is 7 points if she just takes this right now. 12 points if you've got 6 workers spread all over the roads in different segments. Ah. Oh. Okay, so Jen doesn't want to take that because she says, hey, I want to do that. So Jen's going to take something else. She will go on ahead and take this one uh, for some sugar. And so uh, this sugar, it's not a nice big three sugar like this one. It's a little plus one sugar that she can apply to anything when she's selling, like selling over to Monaco to increase the production value, to cross the thresholds, to go from you know average to good to great product, right? Okay, so that was that. She took the two things. And uh, it is my turn. I am finally 
going to run my presses because I can't, I mean, I'm, I'm really kind of all full up. So let's do this. Although here's the deal, folks. This is a level two action. First of all, it's going to cost me a coin uh, and or a laborer. And I get to only run two of my three presses. That's kind of a bummer too. Because here's the thing. Um, there are several ways to earn prestige. I've mentioned one of them. As a free action, spend five coins, which is prohibitively expensive in this game. Um, the other ways to work your way up this prestige check, one of them is when you get up to level, when, when, you, when you make it up to here, do, uh, you know, run every press simultaneously, which you can't do until you're way up there. Um, and so I'm set up to do it, but I don't have this upgraded far enough. Right. Yeah, so I, I, so I, uh, I mean, I could pop the cork and move this up one, but then moving it again, it's still only a level two. So I could still only run two of my presses. So anyway, so I'm only going to run two of these uh, presses and one of them is still going to stay. And uh, what the heck, let's run my big bad boy first. Uh, um, and so now, I, I'm so I, I either I, I run two and spend two coins to run these presses or like a coin and a person to make some wine instead or whatever. We'll see how it goes, but I'm going to run this. So there goes my coin. And that is two plus two plus two plus three. Uh, I don't have any other, you know, uh, pluses. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is a level nine vintage, which means I have to grab a level eight and put one of these little plus ones on here. And, broop. and now I press again. And uh, my coin would cover more uh, wine, so I'm going to go again. But then the next one is only six. Bloop. Bloop. All righty, so there we go. And all these go back from whence they came. So that was my first press. My second press is... Uh, hmm. You know what? Let's save some money. Let's run this one. And let's spend my worker so I save my cash. Because remember, my first wine barrel here gets plus one. So this is, uh, you know, um, two plus one plus one is a level four. And then I will get a level three. So let's take that level four and that level three. So now I got, oh, but no, but they are wine, not champagne. Okay, boom, boom. All righty. So now I've got a bunch of stuff to sell um, to various places of you know, middling quality. Well, no, I'm a level nine. That's not bad. A level six is already up to level two. And, um, but these are both kind of on the lower end, a four and a three. Although, I mean, uh, only uh, bumping up by two could get it up to a six, maybe, to get to medium quality. Anyway, though, so that was it for me. I pressed some wine. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, Jen's turn. Now, she was going to sell, but then she saw she wants that goal. She's going to goal again. Um, and it doesn't cost anything. It's still a level two. So because she's got that power up, she uh, goes and goes. And then she says, hey, I've already completed this. I want those points for nothing. And then she takes any one of these for the benefit. Ooh, interesting. Again, uh, I mean, both of these upgrades are no good because he doesn't have any empty um, presses. Getting another person out here to make more wine would be nice, but she already put a person out there. Knowing that this, if she had known that was there, she would have put somebody else out on another road instead of putting him here. Well, this is interesting. Get people hanging out in the mansion. Getting your workers relaxing in the mansion could be seven or 12 points for three or six of them. So pressing some more wine and getting them up here, that could be a long-term goal she's going for. Um, although this one, Remember, she's not looking for a goal now. She's looking for a bonus. This would give her a Russian flag. I haven't mentioned the American and Russian flags yet, have I? Basically, um, there are going to be some goals like this one right here that says, hey, have sold to America two or three times to get seven or 12. All the American ones are over here by selling to the West. And there's actually, by the way, uh, each uh, deck has a preset number of cards. There is a breakdown of what they tend to like. Uh, over in America, there tends to be more wine than sh uh, champagne sales. And uh, this is where you get to sell to America. Although not always. Uh, London, I mean, this, this is selling to the West. London is also to the West, as is Dublin. But as you can see, there's a lot of chances to sell to America. 
And if you sell to America three times and complete that goal, there's 12 points. Now, sometimes you can get these flags via bonuses as well, and that's what this is. This is selling to Russia, which is over to the east, St. Petersburg, uh, Riga, Odessa, etc. So, Jen could say, hey, I'm going to grab this as a bonus and get a Russian flag, but she doesn't necessarily want to commit to Russian flags without there actually being a goal for getting those Russian flags. Also, if she gets rid of this, then there went a goal for just selling three to five times, just having three to five sales contracts, wherever they are. And, you know, she's already planning. I mean, maybe she just wants to go for that and get a lot of sales. This one is an interesting one. Every one of these goal cards has a suit, like a violin or a champagne flute or, you know, the, uh, the chapel, I guess, or the hoe. This is saying, hey, at the end of the game, have um, goal cards that you have not completed yet, so they are unflipped, um, have either one goal card. Right, so this card, just taking it by itself, is implicitly worth... No, no, because you'd spend this, right? Oh, yeah, there's actually a little cheat sheet of what they all are. So, if she has this, and later on she has this, and they're both sitting around, as a free action, she say, I'm completing this. And look, I've got at least one of these types of things, and therefore she gets seven points. If she's got all of them, if she does a set collection, tries to get the hoe, the violin, and the chapel, then she could get 12 points. And she can see there's a hoe. There's a... Oh, there's no violin, though. So um, anyway, so these are like set collection ones. These are getting... Pe this is another one, getting people out on the road. Um, but it's getting like a lot of people out on the road, as opposed to this one was just getting uh, fewer people, but you know, into individual sections on the road. This is selling to America. Uh, this one is having sold four or seven times uh, contracts that wanted sugar or boxed sales, um, which is interesting too, because Jen's about to sell to Monaco and they want sugar, and she has that sugar too. So anyway, she's still just trying to decide which bonus does she want, and it won't be those because she literally cannot take those because she can't upgrade any of her places yet. I think she's going to take this one and just get another employee ready to press more wine. Because the nice thing is, to press uh, champagne, you need coins. To press wine, you need labor. It's sometimes easier to get that labor than it is to get the, the, uh, the money. All right, so that was Jen's turn. And now, she has to decide. Is, I mean, so she could just say, hey, my free action is, I'm going to get seven points off of this. But if she wants to wait a while, if she wants to do logistics a few times, she can get a lot more salespeople out on the roads. And if she can get them all into individual groups, she gets 12. But she says, no, I'm just going to grab the quick seven right now. So, boom, she just made seven off of that. All right, and she's planning on making 12 off of that uh, when she eventually... Or she could. She could have made seven off of this anytime she wants because she already has three. But, all right, regardless. Okay, so that was Jen's turn. She just did a second goal, and she could do it two more times before it is denied her for the rest of the game. Okay, it is my turn. And so, I, oh, and by the way, I have not popped my cork. I'm going to be the first to sell, after all, and not Jen. Who knew? Um, and now we're both getting to the point where if we do two more le of actions, we will get, we will unlock our, our fourth bonus and make a power more powerful. Ideally, I want to get this and then put it on a power that I've never done before so I get more uses out of it over the course of the game, obviously. I wouldn't want to... Um, you know, make it on my last harvest as an example. Anyway, though, so I'm going to go on ahead and sell. And now I do not have any salespeople out on the road. So my sales value is just going to be the quality of my product plus how bad the different markets want it. And that is a huge consideration, especially because it might be time for me to break Jen's heart. I was talking about doing it earlier, but then I didn't. But I might now. Because I could sell to Monaco too. And Jen, she's all set up, ready to, you know, with her salespeople there and all that. But if I just go over here and sell, then Monaco will be done. And who knows what will be available to her. But I need to think about what. Now, I haven't talked about these very much. There's a, there's a few things to look at. And by the way, ignore the fact that you can see Budapest is coming next. You're not supposed to peek and look ahead of time. Okay, so let's see. First of all, Monaco is only going to buy barrels of wine. They do not want bottles of champagne. Uh, it's worth more if I can throw some sugar in it. It gives me a crown. This is a reason to sell to Monaco because, hey, the more crowns I've got, uh, every crown is worth one, two, or three points at the end of the game, depending on how well I go. Um, and, and Monaco will take from anywhere. And that's pretty rare. Most of the time, if you look over here at Philadelphia and St. Petersburg, 
they will only take from the middle or the right. Uh, they will not take from the left one. And the left one, by the way, is the one where usually you will produce wine because you get a bonus on your wine. So, if I want to sell to Monaco, I've got some level four wine, right? Which is not getting up to six, which means I'll only get three points. But I will get a crown, and it's a sugar-preferring uh, one. And remember, there was a bonus out here for selling to four, um, four or seven times to locations that want sugar or box um, product. So, but here's the deal, folks. The other thing, too, I get to sell twice. I want to sell both of these or both of these so I can clear them out so that I could either upgrade this uh, press or, you know, by getting upgrades or so that I've got places to put wine. If I only sell one from each, then I can't make any more wine. So, am I going to sell champagne to Philadelphia, St. Petersburg, or Amsterdam? Now, the interesting thing about the North is these work orders, they don't care. They'll take, you know, they, you'll notice there's no background art. They'll take wine barrels. They'll take champagne bottles. They'll take anything. And generally, the bonuses aren't quite so generous on there. But anyway, okay. So if I want to sell this level four wine to Monaco, um, it's coming out of my left press. So it'll just have plus one. That means it's level five. That means it's garbage. It's garbage wine. It'll only be worth three points. So you can see Jen, um, Jen she's got her salespeople. Oh, shoot. She, okay, yeah, well, I'm not going to worry about that. I mean, she might sell her wine. Well, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but her salespeople can do plus two on it so that her level three could become a five. And then the, the imp implicit value of this one means it goes up to six and it becomes medium value. I have to admit, I totally forgot. Earlier in the game, she was planning on selling champagne to Monaco and I forgot to look. Monaco doesn't want the champagne bottles. They want the barrels of wine. Oopsie dupes. But anyway. So I'm still thinking, am I going to try and sell... Well, here's the deal. If I sell one of these to Monaco and then whatever's underneath it, maybe they don't want wine, then my second one would go to Amsterdam. And selling a, a, a low-quality wine to Amsterdam gets me one point. Because it's one, two, or eight. That is not what I want to do. I am not excited about getting only one point for these things. I mean, uh, I mean, heck, if I just sold them locally in town by doing the village action, I would get two points. So, yeah, I am not going to do that. So, maybe Jen is fine. Maybe I'm not going to touch Monaco and she could sell her wine over there. And maybe I go to Philadelphia because, hey, I get the, Philade I get the America flag for selling to America. And if I sell to America two or three times and I get this goal, there's another big bunch of points as well. Um, I could get the Russian flag over here. These are both sugar, which uh, ties in with that one. But this also ties in with that one because it's got the box. You know what? Philadelphia works for two different goals. So I think my first sale is going to be to Philadelphia, right? Okay. Now, remember, I, if I'm going to sell champagne to these places, I've got a base of six and a base of eight. I want this eight to go over the line to, you know, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I want a plus three. I don't get a plus three, but I do. If I sell my eight to St. Petersburg, it goes up to nine. Yeah, let's do that. I'm selling champagne today. So I am selling this bottle of uh, nine quality champagne. And I just put these back where they came from. To St. Petersburg. Uh, St. Petersburg values the rightmost press. So that's plus three. Eight plus three is 11. That means I did the best shot. I get nine points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. And I claim this. And now I've revealed Riga, another Russian city that does not want anything from the left press. Okay. And so I keep this as a reminder that, hey, if I'm trying for this objective, there's one of my sugar sales. There's also a Russian sale. Okay. So that was my first sale. So my second sale does not have to be from this vat. Could be wine. But I kind of just want to clear this press out so that I can get more stuff going, upgrades and all the rest of it. But this is where I decide whether I'm going to be a jerk or not. Am I going to sell to Monaco? And get a crown and get a second sugar. And But I will be selling on the cheap. My best wine is four. Plus one is five. That does not cross the line because I don't have any sales. If I had just one salesperson here, I could go to six and I could jump by three points. But I did not take the time. I didn't get my salespeople deployed out there. Um, right. But I know this is where Jen wants to sell. But here's the deal. For all I know, if I take away Monaco, I might reveal something even better for her. Yeah. I think I'm just going to finish this. I've got a level six wine. 
right? So it's already level two, which means it's worth it's a you know middle quality, which means it's worth four points over here or five points over there. So really, um, do I want one more point and another Russia? and hope that I get a Russia, or do I go for this that actually helps me with two existing goals? I think I'm going to sacrifice a point and sell to Philly. All right, Philadelphia. is It, come for, it came from my right, so it's um, six plus two is eight. That is not enough to get into high quality, so that means I get four points. One, two, three, four. And now I have made, I've got two sales contracts that fulfill this particular goal. And these go back to the supply. Boom. Okay, and I've revealed London, uh, who who only wants wine. Okay, all righty. So uh, that was it. I am done. That was my first sales action. It was a level two sales action. Uh, it was not souped up. I didn't have any bonuses or anything like that. So I am done. And but now I could start working again, or I could do another sales action because now there's two places to sell wine. Although again, London does not want my crappy pr press left press wine. Monaco wants it. That's what makes Monaco special. It's because it had a decent... That's why I was thinking about it. But uh, no, I, but ultimately, it made more sense to go for being able to set myself up for another 7 or... Actually, I'd look, look at this. This isn't 7 or 12. This is 10 or 15. If I can make two more sales uh, that, that feature wine or box lovers, that's 10 points. So that might be my big goal. And if so, I should probably go and grab it before somebody else makes it disappear, as we talked about earlier. Anyway, it is Jen's turn. And so, Jen, is she going to sell? See, I was totally expecting her to sell and sell this stuff. because I, I forgot. I thought she was going to sell to Monaco, which would have been cool. But she can't sell these because Monaco doesn't want that. But she wants to sell these to get them out of the way so that she can get another vat of wine so that she could have four. Now, there's another way she could do this. She could sell this one someplace and then make two vats of wine over here and then complete it. So she could sell one and one. So how about we do that? How about we do that? Yes. So Jen is going to sell. Now, things are going to go a little bit different. First of all, Jen is going to sell this left vat um, wine, which is a three plus one is four, plus her salesperson is five, six. So this guy really talked up this wine, and that got her six points. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, boom. Um, that goes back to the supply. She takes this contract. And now, this didn't happen on my turn because when I was selling stuff, I didn't have any salespeople. But after you make a sale, half your salespeople on that road, round it up, go back to the supply. And so this guy, he's done his job selling and it goes back to the supply. He did such a great job, Jen got a coin. See me, I didn't have any salespeople. So all I got was points. Jen is making points and money because she invested in a sales staff. All right. So now Jen is going to make her second sale as well. And she uh, and now all of a sudden Budapest will take anything. And she still got right. So right, she'd like to make a high level sale. If she puts her 7 plus 3, that's 8 9 10 plus one more for her salesperson, boom, another super sale. And a crown, and a crown. That's not bad. So yes, uh, Budapest is where she's selling next. So she will sell this seven. It came from the right, so it's seven plus three is ten. Plus one is eleven, which means she gets the big number nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so now she has made two sales. All right. And nothing else matters on these except for these icons for objectives and goals and all the rest of it. All right, so Jen has made two sales, and now she's revealed Lyon as another place to sell. Again, uh, they want champagne now, um, but they don't want it from the left bat. Okay, so boom, big sales for Jen. Oh, and her other salesperson goes away and gets her another coin. And just like that, she is almost rich enough to buy prestige now. Or maybe start spending some of that money and start because now I bet you anything Jen's next turn is going to be to harvest because I mean not only does she have the money to do it and start you know filling this up so she can make some more wine so she can complete that but she'll be able to lock this power in so she can make it more powerful etc etc by being the first to cross that second line with everything and that was it for Jen nice and so now I got to ask myself 
Am I really going to go for this? Because if I am, I should grab it right now because I see Jen just made a sugar base sale too. So we both could potentially benefit from that. Or should I run over here and get my USA thing? Although the next sale to the West is London. Ah, ah. Which is kind of a bummer. Uh, the interesting thing is the upgrade for sales are that before you make your sales, you can pick any stack and remove the top card if you want to sell to a given area. And remember, the, ge the game tells you, hey, this area tends to focus on champagne. This area is where you can get American flags, and they generally want wine more often than champagne. So you kind of have a general idea of what each of the regions want. And so if you had that power, you could say, oh, I'm really hoping for another American flag. Let's remove London, and underneath it, oh, well, Dublin. So bad luck, but that's what the power for that is. And there's different powers for the different things. Um, like one of them is being able to move additional people around uh, for free and stuff like that. But anyway, it is my turn. I've got two more actions before I can unlock my bonus. I could only ever do, um, you know, get uh, grapes one more time. And then after that's done, the way I would have to get grapes in the future is either as bonuses or by going to the village and get it by borrowing and stealing from other um, vineyards to get grapes. But hey, these are always, always high quality level two or level three grapes. I mean, heck, I, that could be my... I could go to the village right now and get a level 3 Chardonnay. I could put a level 3 Chardonnay over here and start trying to build for the 3 plus 3 plus 3. Um, ultimately, you need to be able to produce a level 12 um, you know, wine. But 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus this plus 3 here gives you the 12, which would get me prestige, which potentially makes my... Um, you know, which Also, I should say, when you get prestige, there's several things that go on. Oh, by the way, oopsie, this was set up wrong. Um, we should be... No, 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 that's right. That's right. Right, right, right. Okay. So, um, when you get prestige, if you reach high... There's more and more points at the end of the game for more prestige. It makes your crowns more valuable. And when you get prestige, you flip another one of these prestige tiles up, going to the ones you already know about, and you get to take one. Get two points. Get a coin. Get another crown for in-game scoring. Um, or... What is that one? I don't think I've seen that one. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, that is a level two black. You know, so getting prestige gives you these really cool powers, gives you points, etc., etc. So you want to be putting yourself in a situation where you've got five coins to spend as a free action, or that you can do a uh, triple pressing at once, or that you can produce a level 12 wine, or you can turn around and sell, you know, up the value of that wine through your salespeople and all that up to level 16. If you can sell it as a level 16, that's prestigious as well. And so that can be a huge source of points also. So what am I going to do next, folks? I'm not quite sure. But I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of the breadth and scope of Dom Pierre. Now, if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.